All right, my friends, welcome in. It's been five years since we resigned at Addo Den Haag. I have taken a lot of uh, ideas from the Discord community. I've got this pulled up over here. I asked them what they wanted to see as we went five years into the future. Inevitably, there's going to be things that you wanted to see that I didn't talk about. So leave a comment and I'll either do another video or I'll just respond in the comments uh, with screenshots or maybe just jump into the Discord or something like that to hit all the things that everybody's going to want to see. But as a general kind of outline here is what we're going to go look at. We're going to look at how Otto Den Haag is done. We're just going to click on the club and see where they finish. Okay. Then we're going to go look at the transfer history because we left them, left them with a hundred million plus euros. What did they do with that money? Who have they sold on? I'm really interested to see first how the club performed and then did those transfers help the club perform that or have they bottled it essentially? Then we'll also look at, you know, managers that came after me, then taking a look at some of the careers of the club legends that we had in the save. So Ricardo Kishna, Panya, um, Barack, some of the newer signings like Gutierrez, you know, and Charles and all those guys. See how they, they moved on after we resigned. Then we'll kind of wrap up looking at all the big competitions. Who's won um, the Champions League, the Europa League, the Conference League, the World Cup, the Euros, those types of things. I'm not going to look too much at, like, obviously, who's won the Copa Libertadores or any of those things because our club was based in Europe. So we're going to focus on the European competitions. But again, if there's something that we don't hit on today that you want to see, leave a comment and we'll get to it. If you've enjoyed the series, I know it's a little early in the episode. If you could hit the like button and subscribe if for some reason you're new. I don't think you're new if you're seeing this, but you never know. So with that being said, my friends, let's just go look at my you know job history. Yeah, just to just point that out. Did the, did the trouble the last two years. How has Otto Den Hug done? What do you think right now? How do you think how do you think they've managed? Le uh, you can pause it now and leave a comment and then don't go back and edit it. You know, you don't want to edit your comment, right? You can see it says edited next to it. So how do you think Otto Den Hug did they continue winning titles, even if not like every year, or did it drop off and it's more like current day Otto Den Hog who are fighting to stay alive as of the time of recording all right let's go take a look okay okay so this is the last season here a little bit of a dip second third but then they bounced back with two title wins back to back and then this season they're currently top of the table So they've won the league three years in a row. It hasn't shown up because we're in 2033. I, I did it on March March 14th because that's the date I, I resigned um, five years in the past, right? So I've just gone. And I also like that it kind of gives you the current season. So Ajax comes back and wins back-to-back -back, uh, titles right after we resigned because we had a lot of coaching staff leave as well. They were like, no, I can't, I can't continue without gray hair gaming. But then we've been able to bounce back and win three in a row. Now that is really interesting. I, I know we got Jan Clement here as the manager. Some names we don't recognize, but I'm not I'm not going to get to that yet. I want to see the transfer history. Is that better than what you thought? I I thought it might kind of dip down, but I'm I'm surprised in the bounce back personally. All right, I've taken us back to the 2027-2028 season. This is the last season we were in charge, but we resigned on March 14th. As you can see, we left them with a big old pile of money, right? So 86 million total was spent that season, but we spent all but 30 and a half of that. Just to make sure we're clear, they go out and buy Aster Vrankic with an X on the end of the name. That's three syllables. C X C K X. All make a very interesting sound. Someone let me know how you pronounce that name. That is fascinating. And they let a guy named Sergio Van Dyke go on a free to go head Eagles. That's the only change in this season. Okay. Astor Vrangshi. So we'll come back to this, but they didn't immediately. It wasn't like, you know, May 15th, they go spend $100 million. But they did spend 30 and a half, like, pretty quickly. Now let's go into later in July. Ooh, there's the $100 million, But it kind of overlaps. Okay, that's interesting. So they loaned in Pedro Cortez from Valencia. They, they bought somebody from Valencia. They did a lot of business with Valencia. <laughs> Got a connection there, maybe? 
pick up a player from Schalke for seven and a quarter, a 450 loan fee from uh, from Everton, 22.5 million rising to 35 million at the time. Like, okay, as of May 2033, it's up to a total cost of 33.5 million. Okay, 24 and a half million for Kulabali from Rangers, another pretty big loan fee from Borussia Dortmund. Up, and again, this is the now into the January window. 27 million from Bayern, 625k. That's interesting from Heronvain, and 17 and a quarter from Boca. And then let's look at all the players. So they loaned out Dan. That's the right back we'd loaned out. They loaned out Ordonez, which kind of makes sense. He was probably not going to make it. They loaned out Verstappen to get him some experience, maybe. Seidel. They sell Mario Gila, which I'm okay with to Roma, 18 million. That's a good return. Uh, I don't remember Julian. They, they, oh my, they sold Armel to Juventus for 44 and a half rising to 72. Current cost is 68. So 68 million for Armel. Okay. Barack did eventually go. It's like, that, I thought Barack would be the first one. They loaned out Haji, who was that, you know, we're trying to develop him. Horse goes to Carter for six and a quarter. Steinman goes on a 65 grand loan to Ausberg. Elshot gets sold to Standard Liège. Lucas Kreese also got sold for ten and a half million to Sheffield United. Tiago on a loan. You loaned out Almada for hundred and sixty grand. I think that's a poor idea. Caviglia goes to Bologna for ten point seven five. Patino gets. This is a like clean out, my friends. Now, some of this is is January, right? But like still, in one season, that's a clean out. Gerardo. Goes to Frankfurt for 7.75 million. Barack to Everton for 30 and a half, rising to 43.5. Current cost 41.5. And then Almada eventually gets sold to Fiorentina. So maybe it was a loan with a or the requirement to buy or something like that for 20 and a half million. That's a ton of change. That's a ton of change. Wowzers. And we'll, we'll come back and kind of analyze these. I, I, I don't want to like click on the players because we'll see their whole careers, right? It's like, let's, let's kind of go through the transfers, but. 100 million in, 151 million out. So we're still, that is a massive outflow of players. Did we get the quality back? Eh, maybe it took a little while to settle in. Going to the next season, 68 million and 24 million out. So we they flush out my old players and they're now going like, all right, let's bring in some good ones. All right, so a 22 million rising to 31, almost full cost to Genk. 10 and a three quarters to Atalanta for Serrano, uh, a loan from Roma, a small one from Hertha, another small one from Erdig Erdigen from the two Bundesliga. Yeah, I knew that. Of course I did. Um, 12 and a half from Tigres, 15 million player exchange with Heronvain for Lucas Vocic. Okay, that's interesting. So they wanted one of our players. Maybe as a sweetener to a deal and 15 million. And then 2.3 million from uh, buying a player from Cagliari. Dan eventually gets sold. Didn't make it. Haji goes out on loan to Braga for no cost. Bender eventually gets sold to Feyenoord. One, one and a half. Steinman to Watford for eight and a half. Cassoni to Olympiacos for almost 10 million. Verstappen on loan again. And Ordonez leaves on a free. All right, we'll come back. We're going to come back. Okay. 41 million in. 157 million out. Charles Luis, 93 million. Wowzers. Wowzers. Okay. So, a, wow. Wow. Okay. And then what's the most we paid for a player on the end? 16 and a half going to 21 and a half. Okay. From Utrecht for Julian or Julian uh, Jacobs or Jacobs. Um. Wow, ninety-three million. Who else? Aaron Zimmerman goes okay for almost six. Uh, Verstappen goes for almost two. Tinoco goes for eleven to Cagliari. And then they just signed Kevin uh, Martinez, nine and a half, rising to eleven and a half. And they didn't they just sign him for twelve and a half, so he doesn't work out. That's perfect. That's that's really good business. Immediately lose 3 million euros. Fantastic. Same thing with Manuel Seidel. Didn't they he was on a free? Wasn't that one of the names? Maybe I'm maybe I'm misremembering. Um, wow, Charles goes to Hertha 
for 93 million euros. And then this, thus, no, that was, that was the last season, 31, 32, 28 and a half. So no massive, I mean, you know, like some good players, but no massive players coming in. Glenn goes to Liverpool for 32 and a half. Haji on loan again. Those are all the names that we know. Koulibaly eventually gets sold to Brentford. Interesting. You'd think they still have a big chunk of money, right? Like, we left here. So that's a, a huge difference. I mean, even if you stack these on top of each other, it's about even. But then a huge, like, amount of income versus sales. More sales than, than coming in here and more sales than coming here. There's got to be a ton of money just sitting around They've only, on, uh, yeah, January of 2033, 14 and a half million. So they didn't bring anybody in the summer. Maybe the manager's happy. And they sold Beganovich. But none of these names, you know, were kind of beyond where we recognize some people. That's, I don't know. Really curious. Let's go look at some of these players. All right, we're back to 27, 28. So Aster eventually ends up at Luster, midfielder, Belgian midfielder. How did he do? How long did he last? 30 and a half mil 30 and a half million. He gives you 14 games. No, okay. He gives you... What is that? 50, 24 games. He gives you one, four, four starts. Eight subs, 11 subs. That's 20 subs. Four starts and 20 subs. He gets a 7.0 in, like, the one, like, real full season that you use him. That was a poor decision. You lose $25 million outright on him. And then eventually he turns into a good player. He goes to Levante, gives him 40 appearances on a 7.16, and now is sold for $9 million to Leicester and has given him 11 starts and 4 subs on a 7.07. Ooh, dear. I just want to look at kind of some of the... the, the, the the bigger fee. So Emil here from Valencia for tw almost 35 million. He's still with Otto Den Haag, 31. Winger, transfer listed. At least with this guy, you're getting some goals and some assists and some starts, right? So 25 starts with eight goals and four assists, 25 starts with four goals and seven assists, 18 starts with three goals and eight assists. Like, you know, 33 and a half minutes, that's not a bad result. Now he started to drop off a little bit. You know, he's his utilization has gone down. He's no longer starting as many games. He's he's more of a sub. But he, he looks to be, you know, an all right player. I have, you know, this the attribute masking is on for me being a manager. Not outstanding, but like not bad. You know, like that that's okay. That was that was an okay purchase, right? Um Kulabali, however, midfielder, I mean he's 34 now. So bottom when he was 29-ish, 24 and a half million. He gives you 14 starts, 10 subs on a 713. Then he gives you 27 starts, six goals, 11 assists on a 749. That was a okay. All right, not bad for 24. You know, like you have to look at the it sounds like a lot of money, but like we were set like Gila is 18 million, you know, kind of on the tail end of his career. So you get a guy who gives you, you know, 11 assists in a season and a, a, fit, a healthy number of starts and a really good rating, and then you know, drops off. In the, the six substitute appearances, he probably gets replaced. And then you sell him for not much money. Probably, you know, that that's what's going to happen. When you buy a player at 29, like this is the difference in the business models. Like I, I tend to buy players when they're 22, right? And sell them when they're 28. When you buy them when they're 29, you're not going to get much for them when they're 34. Or uh, 33, I guess, as it was last season. Or 32. Either way, like when they're in their 30s, the point remains. All right, that did okay, you know. Um... This kid from Bayern, he's not a kid, he wasn't a kid. Same thing, he's 34 now, so then he was, you know, in his late 20s. Um, 27 million. That's a poor choice. Seven starts on a 714. The following season, 10 starts on a 723. Did he have, like, some crazy injury or something? He didn't, like, this is before, I think, Brooklyn Little like five months. 2029? 20, no, so that was... Wait, when did they buy him? Oh. They, they paid $27 million for him on January 31st, 2029. January 31st, 2029. And on 
eight days later, he breaks his leg for five months. And that changes probably who he is as a player. I mean, he's a center back, but it probably affected at that age, his acceleration, his pace, you know, some of those things. Right. And then that means five months, right? So he, he goes all the way into the summer before he's able to start beginning to get back into the squad. He only gets seven starts that following season because he breaks a lot of like niggling injuries three weeks here or a week there, four days there. Again, nothing super long after that, but you know, that, that kind of makes sense. And then you kind of go like, eh, he's getting up there in age. It's time to kind of cut bait, right? Like up to seven, two, three, you know, his best year yet, 10 starts on a seven, two, three. And then you, you sell him at a loss. Again, it's the difference, right? You're, if you're generating enough revenues, right in the champions league and, and in your league and the TV money and all that kind of stuff to where you could sell some of your players at losses, but, and, because you're not spending like 80 million to bring them in. You're spending 27 million, you lose 20 million, but you do okay in the other competitions and you sell some other players. Maybe that makes it okay. Um, this guy from Boca, 17.25, comes and gives him 27 starts, two goals and assists on a 7.38 Continental on a 6.74, and then three starts and three subs, and then they sell him for a 7 million loss. That just seems, again, another center back. Like, did he have some crazy injury? Nope. And he's not, you know, he's 27, so maybe he just didn't develop as much. Or, or he was just a poor purchase. I mean, he had, for the for the games and appearances he got, he was okay. I mean, they, they sold him probably in January. So is that what we're looking at here? It's just like, that's a lot of money to spend on a player for a season. That doesn't make any sense. No, they didn't. They sold him, uh, they picked him up in, oh, that's not going to show us when he was sold. That's going to be the next screen. Um, I'm just kind of interested here. So... Gila, still with Roma on 130 grand a week. We'll just kind of pick some of our players here as we go that we see got sold. You know, we made a profit on him. He gave us outstanding, you know, versatility, and then he goes on to Syria and does great. That's a that good good for him. You know, good. That's that's good for everybody all around, right? Uh, Armel, Ar Armel is an important player. Look at him. Wow, 325 grand a week. Picked him up for 2.7, selling for 68. This enables you to buy a bunch of players for 15 million euro losses, right? And again, he he, he did all right with this. He kind of, you know, started to drop off a little bit. They they sold him immediately. So, and look what he's done. Double digit assists, except for one season when he had double digit goals in Serie A for Juve. I mean, good for him. Huge profit for the club. And a great career move for Armel. That's that's amazing. Um, Haji had always oh, joining Dynamo. Okay, is it good? Um, you know, loaned him out. Oh, he's still part of the club. I thought they'd sold him by now, but it's all loans. So try to keep him developing. How much? I guess we won't know. Will we? Into contract. So n no profit on Haji, but you know, good for him. Um, Horst goes to Cardiff. He's not on loan from Southampton, 23 and a half million. So he goes to Cardiff for six million. He does all right. And then they sell him for 30. I think they got the better end of the deal than us. That's just me. Um, what is that? 24 million roughly. We know Steinman eventually gets sold. So let's check. He's still at Watford for regular starter. Man, you love to see that, right? Like when one of your young players that you thought was going to be pretty good actually ends up being pretty good. That's pretty exciting. And they're using it as an advanced. They, they mixed it up. They're, they're doing a little bit of advanced playmaker and a little bit of advanced forward when needed. So he's like, you know, like how many players don't have like the 10, right? Like usually you'll see him like grouped together. I love that. He's got just like two things he does. I just love that. Um, eight and a half million, I think is probably not enough, but he's not done exceptionally well. So maybe it's fair, but, I don't know. I think that's cool. I, I think it's cool. Like, we, we loaned him out once, and then they loaned him out, and then uh, it's it was time to time to cut him loose. So, how how is Watford doing? And okay, they're, well they're in the Premier League, so he's still you know he's playing in the Premier League, even though he's not playing exceptionally well. He's still start. He's, he's not playing so poorly that they're not willing to play him. So, I guess that's positive. Um, Lucas Kreese, okay, interesting. 
So we made a profit on him. He only got three stars. They must have sold him, right, like in the summer. Because ten and a half to Sheffield United, they loan him out. You know, they use him. Then his utilization goes down. Then he comes back and they use him again in the championship. Okay, so they, they couldn't find necessarily a place for him or they knew they needed to maybe upgrade maybe right in the January window. And so he goes on loan to Vigo so they can bring somebody else in. But then he comes back and they, they get promoted and then he gets 18 starts. And now he's leaving on a free. So, you know, tidy little career for him. Still got some, some ways to go. 26. Kind of a shame he left on a free. Like, he probably could have sold him, you know, but whatever. I can't believe they, they sold Almada, but, you know, 32. So, we got him for $8 million, Got a loan fee out of him, plus $20.5 million. So, that's a good return. Um, you know, he got two starts and nine subs. He was not utilized after we left, right? Like, he had two really good seasons with us, and then his utilization went down, and then they flip him. And he's done all right. 12 assists here in this season. And they've stayed up in Serie A. You know, kind of what we've been looking at in the experiment series and what we saw in Reggio Adace is Fiorentina had been the up and down team. And this version of Football Manager, they're doing all right. They're doing all right. So good purchase, I would say, for them. Uh, Caviglia went to Bologna for almost $11 million. He's now a Cagliari. So they sold him at a slight loss, but they did loan him. You know, he didn't play so much for them but i mean you know they paid 11 million bring him in as a experienced player right that's got some you know can come sub in as needed you know you get six starts seven subs four starts one sub and then it was time to time to sell him and again cagliari could use him and so he stays in syria and now he's starting and his, his ratings have done like look at this season look at the season how old is he 32 so last season he's 31 and he gets 37 appearances one of those is a sub 12 assists I love, I love I love a little story like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Patino eventually leaves on a free. Yeah, he's probably not. I mean, we got a little bit of loan out of him. Did they get? They didn't use him at all. He was a speculative buy. At least it only cost one point nine million. That's not a huge loss, right? Like you can you can afford to take some flyers. Gerardo still kicking. <sighs> Sold him at a loss. I, that one, that's probably more on me than on them, right? I paid $17.5 million for a guy from Man United that was already three stars with three-star potential because we had somebody stolen from us in the middle of the night. So the fact that they only lost $10 million on him is probably a good thing, right? They they get two starts and six subs out of him on a 6.57 is quite poor. And they still got somebody to buy him. That's probably good business, you know, from the manager like or the team. Like, get rid of that guy. Um, Barack, Barack, Everton, 160 grand, worth 70 million, 29, doing just fine. We got him on a free, selling for 41 and a half million. They used him for 30, they used him a whole season after we left, 32 starts, 16 assists, the the most of his entire career with 10 players in the match on a 794. Good for him, you know. He hasn't had nearly as many assists, but he's playing, you know, in the English Premier League. So that's, I mean, look at those ratings. That's really, really, really good. I'm excited. Like, you know, we kind of had our issues there at the end with him, but I'm, he's almost have about to have 100 caps. That's a that's a nice career. This is, like, this is weird because I feel like other saves I've had, like, we've been not the top team, but one of the top teams versus, like, this is almost like the Eredivisie is like you're feeding Serie A in the, in the Premier League and League Un sometimes, right? Like, you're that you're that second tier. Uh, at least that's how I kind of look at it. So that, that's, that's pretty tasty. Pretty tasty there. Um, I'm just curious about this guy because of the player exchange. Vuko Prinsen. We don't know anything about him. He's valued at $41 million, though. On 16 and a, and three-fourths uh, of a thousand euros a week, which is a weird way to say it, but whatever. So 15 million, 28 starts on a 717, 31 starts on a 687. You know, center back, AI, not bad. It's just odd that it was a player exchange. They, I just wonder if they really wanted one of the players or if it was a way to sweeten the deal. I mean, he was a he was a youth prospect. They never used him. And then he leaves on a free. 
so I don't know. That's that's interesting. Um, and again, we're just looking at the the large values here. Christian Vase from Gink worth sixty nine million, one hundred and twenty grand a week. Looks to be a pretty even without full attribute analysis. Looks to be a pretty good player. I'd say they got some good value there. Thirty and a half million, nineteen goals in his second season, and then seventeen, and then ten. I'm wondering if they're gonna if he starts to tail off, are they gonna sell him? He's he's double more than doubled in value, but good, you know that's a good buy from the the AI manager. Sometimes it gets a little wonky, right? But like he's got twenty technique. I just saw that as that disappeared off the screen. So that's that's a that's a good buy. Um, oh, what were some of these other ones here? So we saw Bender Steinman. I mean Bender, what still? Oh, okay, he's he's moved around as a backup, right? Like that's kind of what I expected was gonna happen. You know. Just didn't work out. Didn't work out for him. Um, Verstappen events eventually goes on loan. Did he leave on a free anywhere? No. We paid five and a half plus a player exchange. Loaned him. He got one substitute appearance. Loaned him and then sold him at a loss. Uh, I think he could have turned out a little bit better. But we, we needed Dutch players in our squad. So sometimes you take a loss on that, I guess. Santiago eventually is on a freeze plan for Benevento, 39 grand. I mean, that, that makes sense. Again, we were trying to give a guy a chance to perform, and he kept wanting to go back to America de Cali. Goes on a loan with not, you know, not any, they're not earning a return on investment there. He leaves on a free, and eventually they sell him for 1.3. So I'd say they got the better end of that deal for sure than the club. Moving forward here. And again, I, this, this is probably too late to say this. Obviously, you could skip around if if you're not interested in some of these players. I'm just looking at like the really, really big ones or the ones that we know. Charles, Hertha Berlin spent 96. That is unbelievable. That is, I mean, he's a he's a great player. That's a great find. I mean, you can't argue that he wasn't a good find. We paid 14 and a half for him, sell him for 93 million, and then he turns around and he gives him a 775 with 19 goals and four assists in his first season. You know, and he gave us 19 goals in his last season. That was after we left but a 783 11 players of the match he came alive i mean he was already you know he gave 17 goals for us in our last season and then he kind of dips a little bit but you know 10 goals so seven less goals but six players of the match he was more important his average rating skyrockets to a 752 and then it kind of all comes together the goals come back and the players of the match continue to increase and it's like sell high baby and then he's done all right now, I wonder if he had an injury, right? He's only four starts, eight subs, and two goals. Did he have an injury? Yeah, sprained knee ligaments. Now, that's not explained the rest of the season, but he hasn't had, like, some horrible injury. Regular starter, though, so we'll have to see if they keep him. That's interesting. I'd say we got a good deal there. Got really good production. Got a huge transfer. Almost $100 million for a player from Otto Den Haag. Get out of town. That is ridiculous. Um... Tonoko, MLS. I'm I'm sad. Just don't end up in an MLS, man. They used him, you know, kinda. Thirty starts, nineteen starts on a sub. Again, good ratings. Oh, he get four starts on a seven four seven, and they sold him for eleven million. He only gets twenty starts in the first season, seven one six, and then they don't use him whatsoever, and they sell him at a loss. Oy, oy, oy. Oy, 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 is what I say to that. And then, is there anybody else that was left here? Glenn, we'll take a look at. We saw Koulibaly. None of these really exciting. I just want to see what happened to Glenn. 185 grand. Star player. Look at, look at his attributes. Wow. Wow. 52 caps, only a goal in all of his caps for Scotland. We sell him at a loss, which is shocking. After we left here, 30, 30 starts, 717. 32 starts, 731. 32 starts, 736. One start, 6.4. He, already, he, he knew he was going to Liverpool. He, he's, yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. And then he gives him 34 starts on a 737 with five assists. And then this season, 31 on a 755 with seven assists. He's the new Andy Robertson. I mean, 
he goes to Liverpool to play left back and he's Scottish and he's, I mean, come on. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. All right. Those are all the ones that we recognize. What are your thoughts on those transfers? They, again, they have to have a pile of money sitting around. Like, they have to. But did, have we upgraded the stadium? Maybe. 33,387 all seater now. It was like 21, wasn't it? Or maybe at one point it was 30. It's gone up a little bit, I think. Superb training, superb youth facilities. Got a, a stadium sponsor for $5 million per season. Ends in two more years. Ex excellent academy coaching. Exceptional youth recruitment. Okay. Interesting. All right, here's the managers. So I give them almost eight years, right? Just left in the summer. I got three league wins and six cup wins. Eric Ten Hag. Yes, Eric Ten Hag from Ajax, who eventually went to Real San Sebastian. You can't see this. He was there for a season, and then he comes back, and he goes to Ado Ten Hag before going to become the manager of Portugal. Comes in for right at four years, right after me. Uh, so it took him a month to find him. He gets two league wins. He wins the Dutch Cup. No continental trophy or anything like that. Four cup wins. 70% win ratio. I had a 59% win ratio. But, you know, we kind of started, you know, towards the bottom. I think that's fair. Um, we, we, we handed off a big squad at a big bank balance. That helps. Um, caretaker position. And then Jan Clement. For those of you like me that aren't familiar, he's... Apparently a Stuttgart player. Or now maybe this season he's a Slovako player. He goes on down here to become... I don't know if you can see that. The Trudem manager. Then the Tbilis manager. Slavon Leberic manager. Dynamo Zagreb. And then takes over Otto Den Haag. And he's been there less than a year, but he's won 73% of the games, won the Dutch Cup, and won the league. So you can't really complain, I guess. Hmm. Here are the uh, club's Champions League results. Third in Group A in the most recently. Fourth in Group F. Um, the season after... No, it's two seasons after he left. So lost to Borussia Mönchengladbach in the first knockout round. So got out of the group stage. Lost to Barcelona in the first knockout round in the season after I left. So haven't really been able to break through into being like that, you know, first and second place in the group stage when they got knocked out. Okay. Came third in the group in 30 slash 31, which is interesting. Lost to Cagliari in the second knockout round. So didn't make a run to any finals or anything like that. Surely. They oh, got I guess they had some Europa League and got knocked out and went to the third in 30, 31. Lost in the quarterfinal to Arsenal in the Conference League. It's, it's not it's not ideal. Ricardo Kishna. Oh, it doesn't keep his history. Of course it doesn't. So he after he leaves us. Wait a minute. Okay. This is okay. He leaves us. He goes to Akmat for 2025 through 2029. Gives him 31 appearances and five goals. And retires four years ago didn't continue on to go coaching so hello camera just noticed hello that was bizarre panya is still with us he's 33 playing for shakhtar making 17 and a quarter after he leaves Otto den Haag, we sell him for 30 million that was me that did that he gives them 13 starts 12 subs six goals on a 703 in the premier league not bad Next season, seven starts, 17 subs, so kind of skewing that direction on a 6-8-3 with four goals. Then it goes down further, seven starts, seven subs. Then it goes down further, three starts, one sub, three goals on a 7.5. That's actually a really, you know, really nice. And then that was a whole season. Like, he didn't, there's no, in the middle of the season, he goes to St. Antienne. It's at the end of the season, he leaves on a free. He goes on and does a 7-2-6 and 13 starts and 13 subs. And then they sell him after a season to Shakhtar, um, where he does 13 starts, six subs, four goals, five assists on a 7-2-4. So he's still kicking around. And he's at 133 caps and 62 goals for Thailand. Ho, ho, ho! Stana Moravich is still kicking around. 
He's still the keeper, 52 grand a week, 45 and a half million interest from Valencia. I mean, that's the thing. He was young, right? So he's only 27 five years later, and he's done exceptionally well the entire time we have had him on the roster. So that's a good find. I was just looking at, looking at the best 11. Serginho Dest is still here, 65 grand. He's down to a squad player. Okay, paid 44 million for him. You know, it worked out in terms of the number of appearances, and that's a lot of starts that he's given. So I think, for again, for the situation we were in, we had to pay that much. You could still get a little bit of money out of him. He's got 130 caps in the United States, only two goals, which is kind of sad. Um, Lewis Nielsen is still on the best 11. Wow, that is kind of a shock to me. 29 he has had a bit of a tour. Went to Feyenoord for seven million, then to Gink for twenty-two and a half. Crystal Palace for a season for three and a half. Huge loss from Gink there. Then to Ajax, he's back into the Air Divisi for four point three billion, and then he goes to Portugal for one point seven. Nowhere has he done exceptionally well. I mean, he, I guess he had some good experiences when he was younger with Feyenoord and us, obviously, but. Eh. Uh, Brozuna, still without Oden Hag. Okay, regular starter, 39 million. We paid 8.75. All sevens or greater, right? Ooh, especially last season. 13 goals and seven assists on a 7-4-3. Very tidy little player. Again, really good pickup, I think, from us. Not bad. We looked at Cassoni, all right. Tanoko, Selena, Selena. Uh, Valencia, 300 grand a week. How could I? I? I didn't forget about him. It just, he wasn't on the sold list. which is why I was checking out the best 11. <sighs> Still there. Still playing at a good level, right? Seven, almost seven. Like, if you round up a little bit, he's getting a 7.0, essentially, in La Liga. Has he won anything? Olympic Games runner up. <laughs> he's not really won much since he went to Valencia, but he's getting paid crazy, so I guess he doesn't care. Gutierrez, still with us on 90 grand a week. Again, I, th I still think he's a phenomenal pickup. 12.75 million. He's worth what? 64. Yeah, so they've, they've, it'd be interesting to look five more years in the future. Are they going to sell some of these guys that have got 60, 70, 80 million valuations and reinvest? You know, because they're still getting. You know, they've won the league now three years in a row, but I'd like to see them go get a couple, like, really big pieces and make a run at, like, the Champions League or the Europa League or something like that. Of course, we tried the same thing, and it didn't really work. It's an uphill climb, right? Look at that. 15 goals and 13 subs in one season. That's a phenomenal season. Wow. Again, if you want to take a deeper look at these, you can pause and, and, and go back. Carranza that we sold on. Loan from Southampton joining permanently to Udinese. We sold him for $16 million. I think that was a good decision. He's been okay. He's not done double-digit goals aside from in the Swiss Super League, which is not the highest level since the year before we sold him. I think it was a good move. Now we had him in a false nine. Like, it's partly how we were playing, you know, like, is what it is. But I think that's, that, that's a tasty little roundup. I also want to point out we did have some of the staff leave when I left. Some of them stayed, obviously, but uh, these are all folks that I had renamed. Not all of them, but, you know, I'd, I'd saved to my patrons or my YouTube members. So our head of youth development, which I think was Marcus Fromm, um, head performance analyst, one of our coaches, another performance analyst, both fitness coaches, and another coach all left when I left. Um, and then shortly thereafter, a scout left and an under 18 coach left, and they hadn't at least at that moment in time, replace them, which was kind of interesting. So they go get uh, Nuno Gomes from RB Salzburg and a recruitment uh, analyst from Zult Vargem from Pro League A. Like, so that's pretty fast. Um, obviously, Eric Ten Hag came in first and brought his uh, assistant manager with him, both of, or, or brought an assistant manager in. I just thought, thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, and aside from that, there wasn't a lot of turnover. Like, they, they had... You know, they let the contracts run out on a head physio and under-18s physio, replaced the under-18s here. And then I'm at, 
Or maybe they promoted. Did they promote somebody? Because they didn't hire another... Huh. That's just like some random thing, right? Like, the, who's the head physio? Surely there's a head physio, right? Yeah. Okay, he was just a physio, so he's been he's been promoted. Good for good for Nadir Redzaj, as you do. All right. Um, there's only been one World Cup since we, you know, resigned, but I thought it was very interesting. France is the winner, so back to back World Cups for France. Norway gets the runner up. Wonder why. I, oh, what if they have some striker that's pretty good? Um, England came in second in 2026, as you'll note, and Brazil won it in 2022. Um, I just thought that was very, very interesting. You know, like, I don't know. I just thought, well, like, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty different. And then here's the Euros. So you've got Croatia, runner-up Norway again. Um, France winning the Euros as well. Spain twice as the runner-up um, throughout the save. Um, and then Italy and Germany earlier on. So some changes there. I also thought it'd be interesting to look at the either Champions League or Europa League stages um, or groups that uh, the club has gone through. So they were in a group with Chelsea, Basel, and Spartak Moscow, barely eking out ahead, you know, in 28-29, so the season after we left. Um, I wonder if that also helped, you know, the dip where they, they made it to the next round and that, you know, you didn't couldn't focus your efforts on the league. Um, and then, oh, I don't want, why do I have to go look at it for Otto Den Haag like this? That's, that's just, that's just silly, isn't it? Group stage, all groups. Come on, man. So they weren't in it in 31 slash 30. No, they were fourth place. We saw that. Um, but the rest of the group was Benfica and Real Madrid. Oh, I used to do this every time. Come on, football manager. Y'all killing me. You're killing me. This would be another season we won the league, isn't it? Isn't it, though? Maybe not. Maybe that was the year that was in the Europa League. Let me go find it. The previous year, 29-30. Barcelona, Hertha, and Shakhtar. That's a tough group, I think. I mean, minus Shakhtar with a negative long goal differential. But ending up second on nine points was big. Going back to 28-29, losing to Barcelona 1-0 over a, a, an aggregate leg. That's kind of rough. Losing to Borussia Mönchengladbach 7-3 is equally as rough in 29-30. In, uh, and then we saw, like, you know, in the seasons they dropped down the Europa League, they lost to Cagliari 4-1 on aggregate. And then let's look at the past winners for the Champions League first. So Barcelona, Chelsea, Man City with a, with a four-year run. Chelsea, Man United, obviously this is during the save, but I didn't always highlight this. Arsenal, Liverpool win it again. Chelsea win it again. Chelsea three times and throughout the save. And then Juve. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And then coming down to the Europa League, AC Milan winning it a couple times. Borussia Mönchengladbach winning it a couple times. Lazio, Bayern, Bayer Leverkusen, Tottenham, Salzburg, Arsenal, Atlanta, and also Man United. I realized here that I had the editor that I, I haven't, I, you know, obviously I didn't use it during the save. I've used it during the experiment series, but I was like, oh, we could actually look at the bank balance and look at that, my friends. All right, comma here. They got 27 million in the bank. Am I reading that right? 27 million in the bank. With a 19 million transfer budget. That seems off. And the wage budget is pretty much where it was, like 1.1 million. It's not it's not changed significantly. So I think they maybe invested in the stadium a little bit, but I mean I'm just making sure my commas are in the right. 210 yeah, 27,673. They have burned through like 100 million it has to be wages then, doesn't it? I mean, they're paying this Christian Vase guy 120. That's like 10% of the wage budget. Gutierrez is up to 90. So eh, that's what I'm going to leave you with because I'm a little confused because I'm looking at the transfer history that we've talked about a couple times now. Okay, let's get it off the staff screen. Show me all transfers. There's a lot more selling them buying and some of the gaps are pretty significant right like 
Right, the gap for all the buying they did in this season was that 28, 29, 29, 30, 30, 31. Charles covered that and probably covered this gap too, or most of that gap. So like you, there should be a big pile of money sitting around. How did they go from a hundred plus million to 28 in the bank? It has to have been wages because they've sold players. So it's like a hundred plus million plus they've sold a bunch of players for profit. Right? What am I missing? I feel like there's something super obvious and somebody's going to, like, in the first hour this episode comes out, they're going to leave a very informative comment. We're like, oh, I'm an idiot. But it's like, the only thing I can think of is they invested in the stadium and they've maybe upped the wages. That is literally the only thing I can think of. Unless there's a bunch of players that are leaving on freeze that we paid millions of euros for, right? Like, like that are released. Patino left instead of selling him, but like he wasn't, you know, he wasn't 20 million. So I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little confused as to where all the money has gone, right? So if you understand that, you know, hop in the comments, but I'm curious what your thoughts are. This is, this is where we're at right now. So they dipped off twice, second and third, bounce back. Have won now three titles in a row. It, it's it, it'll show up here eventually. Um, made a couple runs in the you know the Champions League a little bit, you know. So third place this season. So they got knocked down the Europa League right after we left. They had two runs into the knockout round. Do you think? Do you think this continues where they remain in first and like they build from that strength? And now that we know what you look at the bank balance, what do you think has happened to? The money. I, I'm really, like, again, the only thing I can think of is they've really upped the wages and that's burning through, you know, the cash because we left them a big pile of money and they've sold players for more than they bought other players for. So I'm a little confused. But, my friends, if you've enjoyed this, I know it was it's probably a long episode here. Hit the like button. I appreciate your support. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one. <laughs>